Okay, I think we are live. This is my first Facebook Live broadcast uh, for math.promo, math.promo. Now, I've done Facebook Lives for my Countdown to Christmas radio, but this is the first one for math.promo. And I'm trying, a, uh, I'm trying my Mac for the first time for this purpose. I'm going to do a tutorial, and we'll see how the video goes. I do have some stuff to share right from the beginning. So what happens, even though it's live, I hope to post it on uh, YouTube. And when I post it on YouTube, who knows, I'll probably edit it a little bit. And, um, you know, there's certain things you want to do with YouTube. So, for instance, you know, i got to remember when people are looking at stuff where it might look like not there. No, it probably would be like down there. Um, before I forget, uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down there. And then there's a bell by it, which means you'll get notices. And also, to quote my perhaps my favorite YouTuber, a lot of fun. He's a bassist, the world's greatest bassist, um, or, or pretty close to it actually. He's pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. Davey504, please slap like now, slap like now. Um, uh, these are not monetized, don't worry folks, not looking to work, make money. Um, these are not monetized. Who knows what the future holds, but uh, as of right now, these are not monetized. Um, what else do you wanna do? Um, I may mention books, people, organizations, even some organizations that I may work for. Um, my mentioning them does not mean that they endorse me. So this is on me, not on them. And, and speaking of mentioning organizations, I want to do a shout out to Indiana University East. Now wait, I got to point the opposite direction. There you go. Indiana University East. I'm going to do a shout out to Indiana University East. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to do videos like this. Now, I'll give Mascoma Valley Regional High School a lot of credit. I haven't forgotten all my math, and I have taken some college courses from Atlantic Union College, which I don't think actually is fully around anymore. Um, so I have had some other courses, uh, but Indiana University East, I started last August to 2019, depending on when you watch this video. And I've had pre-calc and trigonometry, and I just love that organization. They allow me to... Um, basically work full time and go half time and, and take coursework that I truly, truly love. I love math and hopefully that'll come out. Uh, enough yakking. Uh, basically, this is kind of a test of a setup. I've got a green screen behind me that you can't see because instead you see a scene, if you're wondering, that is a scene from uh, Syracuse, Sicily and Archimedes uh, was born, I believe in Syracuse, Sicily and he did a lot of stuff, calculus and the like. Uh, if he wasn't the greatest mathematician ever, he definitely was ranking pretty high up there. I, I can't say he has anything to do with what we're about to talk about, but reality is, okay, guy's smart. Why not put a nice background here? I can change it though, you know, if you want brick, let's go ahead, let's go with some bricks. I don't really like these bricks because the wall, doesn't the wall look weird? Or uh, perhaps uh, I can make it look like I'm, I'm in an office. Is that better? Do you prefer that? <laughs> I am using a thing called Ecamm Live, if I didn't already mention it really like it. This is my uh, original normal background. So we're going to go ahead and go back to Syracuse, Sicily. And this is a shout out to uh, Envato Elements. It's something you can subscribe to and they give students a extra discount. I'm not getting paid for anything. Uh, they give students an extra discount and they just recently added a whole, I don't have the name at the top of my tongue, but they added a whole new service, a bunch of uh, new images. So either way. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to switch over to the screen. I'm going to, I can't just click for some reason, so I've got to do this. And so now you should be able to see my screen. Let me make this so I can see it better. The camera effects down here. But basically, in this test, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, <laughs> boy, I hope the pen works. I just realized I didn't double check to make sure I had the screen. I brought everything downstairs in the basement, which you can't tell again because my basement has lots of uh, plants uh, blocking everything. So it's rather spacious too, isn't it? My basement, rather spacious. Um, but uh, the reality is, is I, I didn't test the screen, so we'll find out. But uh, on Christmas, because that's the kind of thing you do on Christmas, on Christmas I decided I wanted, I said prove the quadratic formula. Technically, I guess you could say I re-derived it um, because proof yeah, yeah, I guess that's fair too, but prove the quadratic uh, formula. And what we're going to do is, you may be familiar with a quadratic equation. You see something like, if you see 
let's say x squared oh, is it showing up yes it is didn't start plus 3x plus 6 equals 0 that's a quadratic equation pretty simple um, if you have x this this is a cubic and we could go on and I'll misname the rest of them but that this first one here is a quadratic equation now let me go ahead and erase actually I can close that up too um, let me go ahead and erase this because this doesn't do us much good here um, what we want to do is we want to take the standard form of a quadratic equation let's get that and how do I close this again? I always forget. Here we go. You can watch me remembering how not to do stuff. Maybe it'll just go away when I start writing again. Part of it is it behaves a bit differently on a Mac than it does a Windows computer. But the standard form of a quadratic equation would be AX squared plus BX plus C equals 0. And what we want to do is, you may, you may remember from your good old mathematics days, if you've done uh, pre-calc type stuff, algebra, those type of things, and you've dealt with parabolas, you may remember the old quadratic formula. I'm going to put it over here, and we're going to see if we can create it. Let's make it green, because this, this is a, something that deserves, green means good. This is something that deserves being treated as good. So you might remember it. It says that you can solve for x over over here right x right here can you see my little thing pointing there is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac whoops don't go all the way over there over 2a now just remember that over on this side here right there's your a there's your b there's your c and you might say to yourself, that's great, what a horrible thing to memorize. And it can be a horrible thing to memorize, but it's very popular and very useful. <clears throat> how, how do we get that from this, right? What, 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 you know, how do we get this over here? Can you see? Yeah, you can see it. How do we get this over here from this? And you can actually derive it yourself. So let's just talk how we're going to do it. And we're going to use something called completing the squares. And we'll talk a bit more about that as we get there. But to complete the squares, the first thing we have to do is get rid of C. So let's talk about like our original one again here, okay? Remember how I had, uh, well, I can't remember what I put, but x squared plus oh, 3x plus 4 equals 0. What we need to do is take this and, and get this over here. And, and we're going to just deal, deal with symbols. And by the way, I'll tell you right now, in math, as long as I can keep you, even if I know what the values are, often I prefer to continue to use symbols. And then fill it at the end, especially if you're going to end up with like long decimals where you have to round them as you're using them. That can get really messy. You stick with symbols and then stick something in at the end. Things work out better. So let's go ahead and say this. We want to move the C over. And the first thing we want to do to move the C over is subtract it from both sides, right? So if we subtract it from both sides, we get A X squared plus B X equals. If you subtract it from both sides, then it means that it's negative C, right? So far, so good ax squared plus bx equals negative c. Um, to complete the squares, you can't have anything in front of x. You can't have anything in front of x. So we need to get rid of that. And whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side too. What's the best way to get rid of the a? you got to divide by it. So then you end up, if you divide x squared by a, or ax squared by a, a you get x squared plus b over a x equals negative c over a so far so good we just divided the whole thing by a and because it is got an a in front of it when we divided the x squared with its coefficient it got rid of the coefficient because a divided by a is one one times x squared is x squared so far so good um, now completing the squares the idea of completing the squares is we want to get something where we can go like this x plus some value will, uh, what do we want to call it? Uh, we'll call it k, just for the heck of it. x plus k squared. That's what we're looking for. What can we put together to do that? And what happens is, if if you have, like, let's say in this one we're going to complete the square. So this is now negative 4. So we had x squared plus 3x equals negative 4. To 
complete the square on this side, what we would do is we would take this number here, 3, divide it by 2, and then square it. And the reason that works is that if you, if you start, let's say we have, so if you go that way, you're going to go x minus 3 over 2 squared, I mean plus 3 over 2 squared, which you're going to end up with. When, when you kind of go out with this, you're going to have x plus 3 over 2 times x plus 3 over 2. And if you start going out, just remember, if you start on one side, end on one side. Don't start on this side and go over the side you want to go with it. So we're going to start on this side. So x times x is x squared. x times 3 halves is 3 halves x. Now we go to the second part of this one on the left. 3 halves times x is 3 halves x. And then 3 halves times 3 halves is 3 squared over 2 squared, which is 9 over 4, right? So remember I said you wanted to do, you wanted to add to it. Did I just change whether I'm drawing? Yes, I did. Uh, you wanted to add half squared. And that's why to do this one, you would do x squared plus 3x plus 9 fourths. Something just flickered on me on over here equals, and just remember, if you're going to add 9 fourths to this side, you'd have to take your negative 4 plus 9 fourths, okay? So this gives you an idea, and then and then you could solve. Basically, you're going to end up having, well, don't worry about it here. Let's get back to the tutorial. It's going to be long already, longer than it should be. Uh, so now if we do the same thing here, what is half of b over a? Well, that's b over 2a. And we said it's got to be squared, right? Does that make sense? So we're going to take half of this, and then we're going to square it. And we're going to have to put it on both sides. I'm going to erase this for now because we don't want to get confusing. You can kind of ignore the stuff. I wish you could see my hand. I could see my hand. You can't see my hand. Um, over on the right of the screen, it's kind of scratch pad area. And we're going to keep things clean on this side. So what we want to do is what I just said. We're going to take... Oh, got to erase again. Let's go back to pen. We're going to take x squared plus b over a x. And remember, we're going to put plus b over 2a squared equals negative c over a plus b over 2a squared. See what we did? So we're completing the squares because we want to have something that we can figure out what we want the answer with. That's completing it here, but if I put it on this side, I got to put it on this side too. So far, so good. Okay, let's factor the left, make our life a little easier. So this is what we were trying to do: x plus what? B over 2a squared equals negative c over a plus b over 2a. Is that right? Of course not. Got to put the squared on there. So we factored. All we did with this one is we factored this right here. Okay. And that gives us x plus b over 2a squared. It's not going to do us a whole bunch of good right now. And and, and not only will you have this video, but if you go to math.promo, I probably should have put the link in the thing prepared. But you go to math.promo, you can follow this well here. Math.promo actually has this all written out. See? Did it for Christmas. Proof I did it for Christmas. It's got Santa Claus in two forms. I must have. Okay, let's get back to this. Um, let's now now the, the this left side's not right side, I should say. The other left. The right side's not that pretty. We want to get a common denominator. So what we want to do is go ahead and what would be the common denominator of this? First, we've got an issue. Let's go ahead and, oops, I'll erase it. What happened? <clears throat> Let's go ahead and make it so that the left side is multiplied out. Plus b squared over, by the way, you're starting to see things from up here, huh? You're starting to see stuff show up? b squared over 4a. Makes sense because we just multiplied this out. So then the common denominator, if we want the common denominator, and one part has a, I just want to see, I see it's hard for me to see what you see. There we go, you can see the arrow if I don't get too close, right? 
Uh, if one part has the A, the other part has 4A, what's the common denominator? It's going to be 4A. Well, how do we do that? Well, what you want to do is you want to take this here. I'm going to write it over here. You want to take negative C over A, and you want to multiply by 4 Well, this is squared, by the way. Duh, that's a squared. 4A over 4A, right? So far, so good? Um, so you want to do that. So what you end up doing is having X plus B over 2A equals negative 4AC over A squared plus B squared over, oh, don't want to get this, get this, over 4A squared. Does that make sense? You still doing good? Good. Well, let's continue. Now, we want to put stuff together, don't we? Yeah? Let's do this. We're going to put these two together, but we're, remember over here what we were looking for? Let's see if I can get my mouse back. Where's my mouse? Give me my mouse. Oh, well, can't see the mouse. There we go. Um, notice that they've got the B squared and the 4AC. Well, just so it starts looking like that, let's do this, okay? We're going to go ahead and put... Oh, we forgot the squared. See, guys, I am superhuman. Oh, that's weird. How do I undo that? I am superhuman. So you might have already been shouting at the screen, hey, you forgot the squared. Um, I actually had a co-worker say, <laughs> I thought it makes sense. makes me more approachable. So I'm just like you. I make, I make mistakes. Um, I generally do catch them, however. Um, so what we want to do is we're going to go x plus b over 2a squared equals b squared, right? Minus 4ac. Is this starting to look a lot more like it now, huh? Over 4a squared. We're getting really close. We're almost there. Now, now, we're trying to get x alone. We want an x equals situation. Well, as long as we've got a square running around here, it's not going to do much good. So let's go ahead and do the square root of both sides. So that gives us x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus. Remember, can't just... Okay, it depends on what you're working on. A length, a true length, like you're measuring a table or something, that's always going to be plus. But in this case, it's plus or minus. The square root of b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. Are you still good? Well, great, we've got our x. Just an x, but we have the ba over there. That's not good. So let's go and change this. So we have x. We're going to subtract from both sides negative b over 2a. So if we subtract b over 2a from this side, we get just x. If we do it from this side, we get negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. We're almost there, except if we look at what we're shooting for, they're sharing a denominator. Well, the neat thing about it, again, is what is the square root of 1 over 4a squared? Because that's what's really in the bottom there, right? That's what's in the bottom. What is the square root of that? Well, that is equal to 1 over 2a, is it not? So we can now go one step further. We can say x equals negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now we have a common denominator. We're doing well. Let's see. I need my mouse here so I can move the window down. We can keep writing. We're almost done. We're almost done. You see what we have to do last? Okay, everything we need. We just need to put everything over the same denominator. Well, it's already over the same denominator. We just need to make it look like what we're shooting for. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to go ahead and put everything over what we want. We get x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And everybody gets super duper. Wait, wait. Can I bring my mouse up? Oh, what just happened? Huh. I locked my screen. I, I've got one of those, uh, the hot corners. Now, mental note, turn off hot corners. Um, and I did it again. Let me try this again. Luckily, you can unlock with Touch ID. So it must be that top corner. So if I'm moving to the top corner, I've got to be careful. Let's go ahead and pull this up a bit here. 
and see what we were looking for we were going for there we go let's just go ahead and show you that we got it so I don't know how helpful this is to you but I can tell you myself that if I can see the logical progression in math you might say to yourself why did I have to learn times tables well you had to learn times tables because they were a foundation for the next step well you start with addition probably and I have found if I can see the connections all the way up, it's easier for me to remember. Instead of somebody telling me, if you want to get the right answer, just memorize that. Uh, don't get me wrong. You do need to just memorize some stuff with math. But instead of just doing that, um, it's good to understand how they get connected. And, and I actually took calculus the first time in summer school, St. Paul's, is it just St. Paul's Academy? St. Paul's School? St. Paul's School? Concord, New Hampshire, they had a center program, and I was lucky enough to go to my 11th and 12th grade years. And, and the teacher there literally built every day on the next. And if I forgot that day stuff, technically I was always just one step and I could drive it myself. That's what I hope you can try to do other math. Don't, don't, don't allow teachers to leave you behind. And I'm not blaming teachers, but don't allow teachers to leave you behind. Get them to show you some stuff like this. Maybe this one's not as important as some but you know what the Pythagorean theorem okay I'm gonna wrap up so you guys can if you're done with the tutorial go ahead you can shut down I won't take it personally but I'm just gonna say one more thing I'm reading this book called the joy of X and uh, the letter X and uh, you know I didn't realize it but you know for instance did you know that the Pythagorean theorem which you know is uh, a squared plus B squared equals C squared so you got your right triangle and you've got A you got a right angle here you got B you got C and you know that you can figure out C squared or in reverse do some of the other ones but you can do uh, C squared by basically taking the square root of A squared plus B squared uh, it looks more like a 7 than it does a square let's just go like that good enough um, did you know that that was actually based on taking the area of a square <laughs> on each one? That if you create a square, horrible square, you know, an A by A square, a B by B square, a C, <laughs> this is a rectangular where I've driven it, but a C by C square, that if you take the area of the A square and add it to the area of the B square, you get this. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still true, but I didn't know that, and it was a lot of fun knowing that stuff. So hopefully as we do some of these videos, and I learned things that excite me, and they'll excite you too. But the Pythagorean theorem, really, I mean, sorry, the um, quadratic formula, which we, we just derived together, quadratic formula, it does make sense. And, it's, and you can see it's not beyond you. I didn't do anything magic. I didn't pull out some new, you know, Archimedes level of brain theorem and then do it. I took a, a really simple initial standard form of a quadratic equation and with you I derived the quadratic formula that has tortured kids for like decades and decades. Um, the quadratic formula in this, this form has actually not been around a super long time. I don't know if it's a couple hundred years, I'd have to go read again. But, um, but at least for decades, maybe for a couple few centuries, I've been torturing kids but it's right there and you could derive it yourself just think of this if you didn't actually remember you could derive it yourself well i appreciate if anybody's watching live on facebook which i think is unlikely since this, the math.promo page doesn't have a bunch of followers um i appreciate you watching a couple more shout outs uh, if i can bring things up here uh, i need my overlay now let's go back to the proper scene so we can wrap this up appropriately okay um again Shout out to Indiana University East, which does the IU, Indiana University Online. Awesome, awesome math teachers there, too. Um, I won't embarrass the two that I had for my first semester, but awesome. Uh, I also have uh, two sites you can see. Wait, that way. Please uh, check out math.promo, literally, HTTP. Well, yeah, let me bring that up, too. We got the right there. Um, Literally HTTP, well, now I gotta go like that. Literally HTTPS math.promo. And then it's not really a work one, but it's where I'm putting more than just math stuff. 
uh, dataguy.me, and you can see, wait, wait, I gotta point that way again. There's the dataguy.me, which literally is dataguy.me. Don't you love the zillion of new domain extensions we now have and often pay too much for? Thank you for watching. I'm going to wrap up. I think this went okay enough where I can just stick it up on the web. Um, uh, in the comments, let me know what I can do better uh, other than not making dumb mistakes uh, long, not for yakking. It's gone 25 minutes. Um, when I do other ones, I'll probably, if, I, if I'm not live, try to keep it a bit tighter. Um, if you think there's something you'd like me to derive or prove or a type of problem you'd like me to help out with, let me know. Check out my one about the ambiguous case for the law of science. That's my first one, and I think that went okay. I did it quite a bit afterwards. Um, and that was done on a Windows computer with uh, XSplit Broadcaster, which is um, this, this Ecamm Live is great and cost-wise is a lot cheaper than XSplit, but XSplit does allow you to do a lot, a lot of other magic too. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm going to shut down now, and there we go.